Right. So it's uh, um, 2 p.m. So we can uh, start uh, our seminar. Uh, others could come, then I'll uh, admit them. Um, uh, our speaker today is uh, Dr. Uh, Kang Ren uh, from uh, UCL. Uh, first time uh, we meet uh, four years ago, I believe in October 2017, uh, when uh, um, uh, Emilian and I uh, 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 run the uh, uh, scientific program in uh, Isaac Newton Institute in Cambridge, and uh, uh, Kang uh, was the participant of that uh, 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 of that uh, uh, research pro uh, scientific scientific program, and uh, uh, he was very quiet that time, but he was visible. And actually, he helped uh, at least me a lot uh, with organizing and uh, questioning and uh, uh, other things about the our research uh, program, which uh, name of that uh, sorry scientific program name of that scientific program was uh, uh, mathematics of sea ice, and uh, can uh, continue to work in this area, and uh, he. Uh, 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 defended uh, his PhD in uh, January uh, 2020, right? and uh, I was external examiner, so I was happy to do that because it, it was a really good uh, dissertation, and uh, what Skunk is doing is just great, and uh, uh, he uh, invented, he's using very original, I would say, uh, techniques to solve uh, new problems, uh, so that is uh, his papers, uh, and um, uh, he is publishing in uh, Journal of Fluid Mechanics, and uh, I, I believe uh, Physics of Fluid. Is it right? You yeah. published, yeah, uh, uh, in good, in very good journal. So the very good papers, and uh, they are interested. Uh, not uh, in, they are interesting, not uh, because of the uh, not only because of the results there, but also because of mathematical techniques uh, used by uh, uh, Kang. So uh, from uh, uh, last year, uh, he is a postdoc, I believe, uh, in uh, uh, UCL uh, with um, famous professor uh, GX Wu. Uh, many of you uh, know GX Wu and his uh, uh, papers, his results. So um, uh, Kang and uh, GX Wu uh, public working together and publishing papers together. The um, Today presentation uh, by Kangren is uh, fluid uh, plate interaction. Actually, it's uh, about uh, ice, a floating ice plate, but not only, as far as I understand. And uh, there are some uh, configurations which are hard to say they are taken from nature, but could be from some technology. So more details uh, uh, will be uh, uh, given uh, by uh, Kang. So Kang, your please. Um, start your presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the uh, very detailed and accurate introduction from uh, Professor Crocking. Um, I will start uh, the talk today. Uh, first, I would like to uh, thank Professor Crocking's uh, invitation, uh, providing me this great opportunity to present my work on fluid plate interaction and uh, uh, its applications in the apply, uh, Applied Mathematics Research Seminar hosted by University of East Anglia. Um, this slide shows the outcomes of my talk. Uh, background and motivations are introduced first. The mathematical model comes next including assumptions and motivation uh, and the simplifications um, and the governing uh, the governing equation and boundary conditions for the boundary value problems. After this, I will give an overview of my published work on wave ice structure interaction. Then uh, I would like to focus on the topic of uh, interaction between fluid and plate in confined regions by demonstrating two of my works. The former one is um, hydroelastic waves propagating in a rectangular channel. And the, the latter one is about the liquid sloshing in a cylindrical tank with an elastic cover. 
One of the motivations of the research is to enhance the understanding of environmental features and the sus uh, sustainability of polar oceans. Uh, the ocean environment of uh, polar regions is highly dynamic and complex. Uh, there are currents, waves, winds, and different forms of sea ice coexisting in this system. As shown in the illustration below. So to establish a feasible mathematical model for uh, the interaction between current, wave, and the sea ice, and to predict the dynamic features of the ocean environment is challenging, but also very important and necessary. Uh, we can see in the past decades, uh, there are extensive publications on this topic. Uh, the large ice sheet, as one of the most common thin ice forms, is usually modeled as an elastic thin plate resting on the upper surface of the ocean water. Another motivation of uh, is uh, engineering applications in cold regions or the ice covered oceans. For example, um, through mathematical modeling, we may predict the hydrodynamic uh, performance of the underwater vehicles or surface piercing ocean structures in ice covered rivers, channels, and oceans. Specifically, uh, it has been reported that the Arctic shipping routes may become viable in the future, and they are expected to greatly shorten the shipping routes, uh, the shipping uh, distance between Asia and uh, Europe, and help to reduce the global greenhouse gas emissions. However, when ships are navigating through the Arctic uh, waters, sometimes uh, they are navigating in uh, very narrow channels confined by ice sheets. Um, in such a case, we need to consider the impact of ice sheets on the local flow field uh, and on the ship's hydrodynamic performance to ensure a smooth and safe navigation. In addition, studying the interaction between fluid and the plate uh, has other engineering uh, applications. Take the solution dynamics in tanks with elastic structure, for example. Um, this study can be related to the safe LNG transportation and uh, liquid, uh, liquid uh, fuel storage. Tuned liquid damper uh, is designed for high rise buildings, ships, and other marine structures, and could also be used in space engineering, such as the propellant containers of uh, space vehicles. Next, I would like to introduce the mathematical model used in my research. First, I will give out the assumptions and the simplifications. And based on this, I will introduce the governing equation and the boundary conditions for the boundary value problems. First, ice cover or other elastic cover are treated as uh, linear elastic thin beams or plates. Uh, they have small curvatures and are homogeneous. Second, the liquid is treated as inviscid and incompressible fluid, and its motion is irrotational. Therefore, the potential flow theory can be adopted uh, to describe the motion of the fluid. Third, we assume that the motions of waves and the structures are of small amplitude, so the model can be linearized and the superposition law is feasible. Fourth, we assume that there is no cavitation between the elastic cover and the liquid. Last, apart from the elastic uh, plate, uh, all the other structures, uh, no matter uh, fixed or in motion, uh, will be all treated as rigid bodies. Impermeable conditions are satisfied on these rigid body surfaces. 
based on the potential flow theory, the velocity potential phi is used to describe the fluid motion and satisfy the Laplace equation throughout the entire fluid domain. The Laplace equation has been given below, respectively in Cartesian and the cylindrical coordinate systems, where nabla square is, uh, is the two-dimensional Laplacian operator. Next, I will introduce the boundary conditions at the interface of fluid and the plate. Uh, at the interface, the deflection of the uh, elastic cover W and the velocity potential phi should satisfy the uh, following uh, dynamic and uh, kinem uh, kinematic conditions as listed below. P is the fluid pressure acting on the plate, uh, which can be given through the linearized Bernoulli equation as shown on the right hand side of the first equation. Here, uh, E, H, rho E and the nu are respectively the Young's modulus, uh, thickness, density, and Poisson's ratio of the plate. L is the flexural rigidity, which is a function of uh, E, H, and nu. Rho is the density of the liquid, and uh, G is the acceleration due to gravity. Using dynamic and kinematic conditions to uh, el eliminate W, we can further obtain the combined condition at the interface. On the rigid body surface, the impermeable uh, condi uh, boundary condition should be satisfied. Uh, specifically, on the flat bottom at uh, z equals to minus h, uh, where h is the depth of the liquid, uh, we would have uh, d phi dz equals to zero. In addition, the linearized free, uh, free surface condition is given below when we set the region of the coordinate system at the undisturbed free surface. Um, in the fluid plate interaction problem, uh, we should pay special attention to the edges of the plates. Uh, edge conditions are very important to the calculation of the plate prob problem and should be treated properly. Uh, there are usually three common used edge types, uh, namely clamped, free, and uh, simply supported, uh, which has been uh, summarized in the well-known textbook published by Timoshenko and his colleague. Um, in this part, I would like to give an overview of my published research on wave ice structure interaction. Um, the first one is about the analytical study for the wave excited motion of a two-dimensional ship section in open water channel confined by two semi-infinite ice sheets. This was the first work uh, during my PhD study, and it has been published in Physics of Fluids in 2016. Um, in this work, we divided the, the entire fluid domain into several subdomains and they used the method of uh, matched eigenfunctions expansions. Um, the green second identity provides an efficient means to match the velocity potential and its normal derivative at the interfaces of neighboring subdomains, and also to impose the edge conditions. The wave radiation and the diffraction problems were studied first, and the wave excited motions of the floating body were obtained by solving the equation of motion. The second work is about the wave diffraction and radiation by a bottom mounted vertical uh, circular cylinder uh, standing in a three dimensional polymer. Um, vertical cylinders are very um, popular components uh, which can be seen in many uh, ocean structures. As shown in the sketch of the problem, uh, polynear uh, refers to an area of open water 
confined by sea ice. In this work, uh, for, simpli uh, for simplification, we considered a polynear with a circular edge. We applied the method used in the first work to this three-dimensional case. Uh, the entire fluid domain has been divided into two subdomains. One is beneath the ice sheet, and the other one is the open water area apart from the vertical cylinder. Different from the uh, two dimensional case, in each subdomain, the velocity potential was expanded into a series of basal functions. Um, later, I carry on uh, investigating the three dimensional interaction between hydroelastic waves and multiple vertical cylinders uh, with clamped or free edge conditions. In this paper published in the Journal of uh, Engineering Mathematics, we continue using the uh, method of matched eigenfunctions expansions, but uh, this time we use the Green's uh, second identity uh, in an artificial domain. Um, this allows us to deal with this problem in an efficient way. Based on this scheme, we further considered uh, weave interaction with multiple vertical cylinders in different arrangements, uh, such as the four cylinders in square uh, arrangement, uh, single array, and the double arrays of cylinders. Extensive results are, are provided, uh, such as the weave forces and the vertical shear forces on the cylinders. Um, this work is the last topic of my PhD thesis, uh, which is on the propagation of hydroelastic waves in a rectangular channel. Uh, it has been published in Journal of Fluid Mechanics. I will give a detailed introduction of this work later. As a co-author, I also participated in the study of the uh, diffraction of hydroelastic waves by multiple uh, arbitrary shaped cracks. The vertical mode expansions have been used in the procedure, and the uh, integral differential equations are solved numerically through the boundary element method. Uh, in another work I also contributed, uh, we applied the green function technique for the problem of wave radiation and the diffraction of a body. Uh, floating in an open water channel uh, confined by two semi-infinite ice sheets. The green function satisfying all the boundary conditions apart from that on the body surface is derived uh, through applying a Fourier transform in the longitudinal direction of the, of the channel. Recently, a paper was uh, published in the Journal of Sound and Vibration. Uh, it is about the free vibration of liquid in a cylindrical container uh, covered by a circular elastic cover. The coupled interaction between liquid motion and the plate vibration is investigated. I will give a detailed intro introduction of this work later. Just a few days ago, our second GFM paper on the topic of the ice covered channel has been published online. Uh, this work is an extension of the GFM work in 2020. And in this work, we consider the interaction of, uh, of a uniform current with a submerged ho horizontal circular cylinder in an ice covered channel. The green function satisfying all the boundary conditions apart from that on the body surface is first derived. For a transverse circular cylinder, uh, through distributing uh, multiples along its central line, uh, the velocity potential can be written in an infinite series with unknown coefficients, uh, which could be further determined by uh, imposing the impermeable condition on the body surface. The lead author of this paper, Yi Feng, is now a PhD candidate at UCL in his third year. Next, I will focus on the topic of uh, fluid plate interaction in 
confined regions. I will introduce two of my works. Um, uh, one is the hydroelastic waves uh, propagating in a rectangular channel with or without a longitudinal crack. And the other one is liquid solution in a, a cylindrical tank with an elastic cover. Um, the reason why I choose the, uh, to introduce these two works together is that uh, there are several things in common in these two problems. Uh, first, they are all in confined regions. The rectangular channel has two parallel channel side walls, uh, and the cylindrical tank has impermeable side walls as well. Second, um, in these two problems, the upper surface of fluid domain is uh, completely covered by the plates. Third, there is no external excitation in these two problems, and the free vibration of the system can be investigated to obtain the natural frequencies and the corresponding natural modes. Last, uh, same expansions are adopted for both a uh, fluid domain and the plate in each of these two problems. Let's see, let's see the highlights of the rectangular China work. Um, same expansions adopted for both the uh, velocity potential of the fluid domain and the uh, deflection of uh, ice sheet. The efficiency of the scheme can be reflected in the matching procedure at the interface and also the enforcement of arbitrary combinations of uh, different edge conditions along the two side walls. The scheme has been further extended to deal with ice sheet with a longitudinal straight line crack. Extensive results have been provided for natural frequencies uh, with celerity, uh, with profiles, and the principal strain distribution on the ice cover. Um, the Cartesian coordinate system is established as shown in the sketch. The origin is set on the uh, undisturbed ice sheet surface uh, at the central line of the channel. Uh, X axis is along the longitudinal direction, Y axis is along the uh, transversal direction, and the Z axis uh, is pointing upward. Here we consider the wave is uh, periodic in both time and the X direction. Then we can write the deflection W and the velocity uh, potential phi uh, into the following forms. Um, where kappa is the wave number along x direction, omega is wave frequency. Uh, Re refers to taking the real part of the uh, complex expressions. Then the newly defined variables, uh, small w is the, uh, only the function of y, and the small phi is the function of y and z, which are independent with uh, time t and x. Then by uh, substituting the expressions of big W and big phi into the uh, dynamic and kinematic conditions on the interface, uh, we can get the dynamic and kin uh, kinematic conditions in terms of uh, small w and small phi. Next, by taking into account the impermeable conditions on the side walls and the uh, flat bottom, uh, we can write the expressions of the velocity potential as the third equation shown in this slide. Phi is expanded along the transverse direction as a series of cosine functions with unknown coefficients bn. Sigma n is equals to n pi over 2b, which is determined uh, from the imp uh, impermeable conditions of the side walls, and the kn is due to the Laplace equation. 
In order to impose the dynamic and kinematic conditions on the interface more conveniently, we would like to use the same expansions for both of the de uh, deflection of the uh, plate and uh, velocity potential. However, when we did it, we found that to use a Fourier cosine series directly for the deflection W would be problematic. First, the terms in the series of W cannot satisfy all the four edge conditions at the same time. And these conditions have to be imposed through W separately. This is not a trivial task. Second, the uh, Fourier series is not always differentiable, but uh, integratable. Therefore, here we choose to expand the fourth order derivative of the deflection uh, into a cosine series, as shown in the first equation of the slide. Then through integration, we can obtain the expansions of the third order, second order, first order derivatives of uh, W, and the expansions of uh, W itself. We can see from the ex expansions of W as the second equation in this slide, uh, we find that the uh, integration has brought four additional, four additional constants, uh, C0, C1, C2, and C3. We can find that uh, they have the same dimensions as those of deflection, slope, bending moment and the shear force respectively. Um, substituting the expression expansions of phi and uh, w into the dynamic and kinematic conditions and further expand uh, y plus b to the power of g into series of cosine functions. We can obtain the relationship between a n, b n, and c zero, c one, c two, and c three as below, where alpha n g and beta n g are all known coefficients. Um, the four additional coefficients c zero, c one, c two, and c three can be further determined through imposing the four edge conditions at the channel walls. On each side of the channel wall, we can choose one type of edge, and each type of edge uh, contains two edge conditions. So there will be four linear equations for four unknowns. The matrix equation is listed in this slide. In general, A is a four by four matrix, and C is a column vector containing C0, C1, C2, and C3. For non-trivial solution of C, uh, we should have the determinant of the matrix A uh, being zero. This can give the relationship between the wave number kappa and the wave frequency omega, which is also called the dispersion relations uh, in the channel. Besides, for a given uh, wave number kappa, we can also uh, determine the natural frequencies of the ice channel, uh, ice covered channel. Um, in this slide, the curves of the dispersion relations in an uh, ice covered rectangular channel is shown in figure one. In the analysis, uh, all the variables are non dimensionalized based on the water depth H the acceleration due to gravity G and the density of water rho. Here we give the results at uh, B star equals to two, which means that the half depth, uh, half width of the channel is twice of the water depth. The variables uh, on the X axis and Y axis uh, of this uh, curve are wave number and the frequency respectively. In this graph, uh, we have uh, given out the solutions of the three uh, different combinations of edge types along the two side walls, such as uh, clamped edge com uh, conditions of uh, 
uh, at, uh, at the both sides, uh, clamped edge on one side and free edge on the other, and the free edges on both two sides. They are shown by solid, dashed, and dotted lines, respectively. For a given wave number, kappa, uh, it cr corresponds to infinite number uh, of uh, natural frequencies. Here we only displayed the first five smallest ones. Specifically, for the case of uh, completely clamped edges, we compared our results with the published ones and good agreement can be formed. When the dispersion relations have been obtained for a given wave number, kappa, and one of the corresponding natural frequencies, omega, once one of the non-zero coefficient, ci, has been prescribed, the others can be calculated. Then the corresponding wave profiles can be further obtained. In figure two, we show the curves of the deflection W along the transverse direction Y in the channel at kappa uh, star equals to one and B star equals to two. Here we considered six different combinations of edge conditions on two sides. In each graph, uh, the solid line refers to the results at the first natural frequency and the dashed dotted line corresponds to the results at the second natural frequency. In addition, we can further calculate the maximum principal strains on the ice sheet. The principal strain of the plate can be obtained by calculating the eigenvalues of the strain tensor matrix. We may choose one of the mode shapes for analysis in figure three, we provide the curves of the maximum principal strains across the channel. Like the uh, graphs for the deflection, we uh, further provide the results for the six combinations of different edge conditions along two set walls. In each graph, the, uh, the solid uh, line refers to the results at the first natural frequency, while the dashed dotted line refers to the results at the second uh, natural frequency. We can observe from uh, figure 3a that uh, the largest value of the maximum principal strain occurs along the side wall for the first two natural frequencies. This indicates that crack might be likely to occur along the uh, channel wall. From uh, figure 3d, we can observe that in the uh, both simply supported case uh, edge case, the maxima of the maximum principal strain occur at a distance from the edges. In such a case, uh, cracks, mm, cracks might be more likely to occur at a distance away from the channel banks. It is also worth mentioning that on each position of the ice sheet, the deflection of the principal strain can be different, and the cracking might be occur uh, perpendicular to the direction. Um, next, we move to the other problem of liquid sloshing in a vertical cyl uh, cylindrical tank with, an, uh, with a circular elastic cover. Here we focus on the natural modes of the coupled vibration. The highlights of this work are summarized in this slide. Uh, two efficient solution methods based on uh, Bissell Fourier expansion and vertical mode expansion have been developed, and uh, we have proved that uh, these methods are equivalent. A neat form of the equation has been obtained for natural frequencies. Natural mode shapes and the distribution of the maximum principal strain are analyzed for the elastic cover. Here it is worth to uh, mentioning that the same problem has been considered by Bauer based on the Bissell Fourier expansion in 1995. However, um, there are some major uh, 
uh, and significant differences between our first method with his. For example, um, Bauer 1995 uh, subsequently uses uh, two series for the plate deflection, uh, one double series plus one single series. And the latter one is different from that uh, used for the velocity potential. So when matching the conditions at the interface of fluid and plate, the single series has to be expanded into the BCL series of the velocity potential. This will lead to the unknown coefficients being coupled when the uh, edge conditions are imposed and finally leads to an infinite set of linear equations. The natural frequency is denoted as omega, and we may write the velocity potential and the deflection of the uh, elastic cover in the following two expressions below, uh, indicating that they are per, uh, periodic with time. The velocity potential phi may be expanded into a Fourier series in seat direction as the expressions below. Gn is the BCL functions of the first kind. Alpha nm times R0 are zeros uh, of the first order derivative of the BCL function. This is due to the impermeable uh, boundary conditions on the tank wall. Similarly, we can also expand the deflection of the circular uh, plate into a Fourier series uh, in seat direction. We may find that the procedures to solve the problem of WNC and WNS are identical. Uh, so therefore, we, uh, we will focus on WNC in the following uh, analysis and use WN for WNC. By substituting the expressions of uh, phi and w into the dynamic and kinema uh, kinematic conditions at the uh, fluid plate interface, and also use the orthogonality uh, uh, of the trigonometric functions, we can obtain the two equations shown at the bottom of this slide. We may find that uh, Wn and its spatial derivatives exist in these two equations. When we expand Wn into a BCL series, as we have done for phi, and taking direct derivative of Wn uh, with respect to R uh, can lead to some problems. This is similar uh, to what we have found in GFM paper for the rectangular channel. So our method to obtain the expansions of the spatial derivatives of Wn is through uh, integration by part. For example, we first define Ln as Laplacian Wn. Uh, we consider the following integration, and through integration by part, we can find the expression of Im in terms of Wn. Similarly, we can also uh, define uh, Mn as by Laplacian Wn, and through integration by part, we can also get the expressions of uh, Km. Now we can expand Wn as a series of BCL functions, and the, uh, and the coefficients in uh, Im and Km can be further obtained using the orthogonality of the BCL function. Therefore, we can finally get the expressions of Ln and Mn below. It is worth mentioning that the above expansions are different from those obtained by sub uh, substituting the expressions of Wn directly into the equations obtained from dynamic and kinematic conditions. This is one of the key points of our uh, uh, scheme. Then we can use the expansions of Wn, Ln, and Mn 
to rewrite the equations obtained from the dynamic and the kinematic conditions below. Finally, we can derive the expressions of the coefficient EM in the uh, expansions of WN, which is displayed at the bottom of this slide. Uh, we may find that in the expression, uh, two terms has been uh, highlighted in blue. Uh, these two terms are treated as uh, unknowns. We can get uh, two linear equations for these two unknowns through uh, for the imposing the edge conditions. The three types of edge conditions written in cylindrical coordinates have been provided uh, in the red box. Here we take the clamped edge case, for example, the two linear equations are given below. Uh, the uh, the known coefficients a11, a12, a21, and a22 are also provided. Here we notice that uh, uh, that uh, a21 equals to zero. In general, the natural frequencies can be obtained from a11 times a22 minus a21 times a12 uh, equaling to zero. Specifically, as A21 equals to zero for clamped edge case, so the equation for the natural frequencies can be simply uh, become A11 equals to zero. Uh, in our work, we also developed another schemes uh, based on vertical mode expansion. And I will not give the details of the procedure in this talk due to the time limit. Uh, I will share with you the link of this paper later. Um, here I just show the equation for the natural frequencies uh, I obtained uh, for the clamped edge case based on the vertical mode expansion. SM is the function of kappa m and kappa m are uh, eigenvalues which can be obtained from the equation of the dispersion relations. We can find that the equation for the natural frequencies obtained uh, from the uh, vertical mode expansion looks very different in form from the uh, equation uh, obtained based on the basal uh, Fourier expansion. However, through the residue theorem, we have proved that they are in fact identical. Next, I will show some results of the paper. We used the radius of the circular tank R0, the density of liquid, the acceleration due to gravity for non-dimensionalization. In figure four, we display the first four natural frequencies against different liquid depths, H, uh, for various edge conditions. In Bauer 1995, the author only provided results for the clamped edge case. Here, uh, the results from Bauer 1995 are non-dimensionalized uh, non and shown as the black dashed lines for comparison and good agreement can be formed. Besides, we also displayed the results for simply supported edge and for uh, free edge cases. We can observe that for the case natural frequencies at a given edge, uh, the clamped edge corresponds to the largest value, while the free edge corresponds to the smallest. We can also find uh, from the graph that with the increase of liquid depths, the curves increase rapidly to uh, limit values. In figure five, uh, we show the normalized uh, mode shapes for the uh, clamped edge case at the different modes NK. We also uh, uh, we, we can also uh, we, we, we can observe from the figure 5a uh, that when n equals to zero, 
it corresponds to the axisymmetric case. Well, for n greater than zero, the mode shapes become non-axisymmetric. The nodal lines are shown as the dashed dotted curves in the graphs. We can find that the mode shapes are antisymmetric to the nodal diameters at n equal to or greater than one. And so it is expected that the mode shape graphs will become more uh, uh, oscillatory with the increase of n. In this slide, uh, figure six and the seven are displayed respectively for the distribution of the maximum principal strain of the circular elastic cover uh, corresponding to mode shape uh, at n equals to one and n equals to two for clamped edge case. We can see from the graphs that uh, symmetric, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the graphs are all symmetric about the center and also the corresponding nodal diameters. Okay, uh, thank you for your attention. Any questions or uh, comments? Thank you very much, uh, Kang, for your very interesting presentation. Right, so the um, uh, seminar is open for uh, questions from our participants. So you can just uh, unmute your microphone and uh, ask uh, um, a question. E, uh, Okay, uh, uh, other participants are thinking about their question. Uh, can, let me ask you. So in uh, uh, the problem for a circular cylinder and uh, elastic uh, cover, it seems that uh, you separated time, right? You assume that uh, uh, the solution is periodic in time. You are searching for solution which is periodic in time. But it seems that you also can from the very beginning to separate angular coordinate. You can say that uh, you are uh, using the solution as uh, uh, like deflection, as uh, uh, W of R uh, multiplied by say cosine and, uh, and theta and uh, 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 exponent of uh, time, right? So, and you, uh, from the very beginning, you can reduce the problem to a uh, two dimensional problem. Yeah. Right uh, with the uh, that e and r. So the, because the, as I understand, uh, there are no such modes which are combination of different uh, different uh, trigonometric functions. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. Uh. I I want to add something. Uh. Uh. All my studies are uh, are based on the frequency. Uh, domain uh, analysis. Uh, we treated the uh, all the uh, all the results are, are periodic with time, uh, but in the real uh, problem, uh, uh, all the physics are related to time. So we 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 find the basic uh, solutions, and uh, we can further uh, uh, calculate the. The real uh, simulate the real time domain simulations uh, by uh, a superposition law uh, of these uh, basic solutions, and uh, uh, the the parameters may uh, depend on the initial uh, state of the problem. I see. Um, uh, can can you can you see chat? Uh, there is a question about. Uh, okay, I cannot say the same, but similar question. Can you see chat? Oh, um, sorry. Uh, if you uh, open chat, it's uh, 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 yeah, yes, yes. I, I, yeah, I, I, I found it. Yeah. Uh, have you got a plot of the dispersion relation of the wave mode in the cylinder? So the it's a, a little bit related as I understand uh, dispersion relation for waves in channel. Uh, it's um, that omega of K where K is wave number along the channel. 
but uh, in the case of uh, in the case of um, uh, circular cylinder, uh, omega your omega is the uh, function, or, or, or you can be considered as function of uh, uh, n, which is a number of uh, uh, term in Fourier series. Uh, uh, you mean the n is the number of uh, nodal diameters? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the, there are no omega k in the cylinder, right? But there are uh, omega of n in the cylinder. Uh, let me see. Uh, when the high, have you got plot of this person relation omega k of the modes in the cylinder? Uh, uh, in fact, I I got omega uh, n k. Uh, the n is the uh, uh, equals to zero, one, two, three, uh, yeah. uh, and the key is the uh, is the order of the sentence because for each n uh, okay. we have uh, infinite uh, natural frequencies. Uh, usually okay. we will uh, just uh, uh, show the uh, the the first one, two, three. Uh, yes. Okay, but uh, so they are all existed uh, as a basic solution. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so th th that K for cylinder is not a continuous uh, wave number, but it's a discrete uh, 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 number of uh, uh, modes uh, yes, uh, yes. in our direction. I see. Yes, yes. But you also can plot it because it, it's kind of the same, not the same, but it's very similar. So you yes. uh, you in one slide you showed why the problem for uh, uh, channel and for circular cylinder they are similar. Yes. But also you can say that uh, uh, and you show that both of them are periodic in time. But also you can say that uh, uh, both of them are periodic in some sense in longitudinal direction in some sense. So uh, for channel, it's periodic along the channel and yes. uh, for circular cylinder, it's periodic. It's a theta it's, direction. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So they are kind of similar in this aspect as well. Yes, uh, if okay. we if we consider if we further consider the the force, uh, the, 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 the liquid uh, excited by the uh, forced motion of the tank, uh, we need to uh, consider uh, take into all these uh, uh, so solutions uh, into account to and to meet the initial uh, conditions of the real problem, and then we can uh, uh, further give the uh, solutions of the uh, li liquid liquid motion in a, a time uh, time domain. Uh, 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 Problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, I see. I see. Mm -hmm. As I remember, you mentioned that this uh, problem with a uh, uh, circular cylinder, rigid circular cylinder, and uh, uh, elastic cover, uh, it it was uh, studied by others. Yes. And I. I, I don't remember the solution of this problem, but I remember that there were projects uh, or design how to uh, decrease or mitigate uh, 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 sloshing in yes. uh, tanks, right? So yes. to, to put uh, elastic uh, uh, carpet actually uh, on the top and uh, then uh, the um, uh, hopefully, not hopefully, but uh, the idea was that uh, uh, the uh, sloshing uh, uh, will be significantly reduced, and that is all right. But on the other hand, uh, the motion of this carpet uh, could uh, uh, damage uh, the rest yeah, of yeah. the tank or tank. And uh, finally, it's decided that it's not idea to place anything uh, to the <laughs> into into the uh, LNG LNG tank. Uh, this is what I remember. But if you, if you, if you know more, uh, please tell us. And also, please tell us how, uh, 
if it was solved already uh, in another by another method, uh, what you mean uh, problematic solution? You mentioned that it's problematic to solve in some sense directly by expansion. W why it's problematic? What's wrong with that uh, approach? Uh, okay, I will uh, try to answer these two questions one by one. Uh, first, uh, 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 yeah, th this this problem is uh, has been uh, uh, studied by Bauer in 1995. I think uh, I think the background of uh, his research is more related to the uh, spacing uh, space engineering. Uh, they will consider the uh, uh, propellant uh, containers in the uh, mm -hmm. in the space vehicles and they want to uh, to add some elastic uh, structure into the container to uh, help to uh, control the sloshing. Um, and uh, I think in the LNG uh, shipping, uh, there are also uh, this kind of uh, uh, structures such as the, the ba baffle uh, and also the, the side walls. They, they will divide the, uh, the very uh, large tanks into uh, uh, different blocks to uh, to maintain the uh, or to control the sloshing and to reduce the uh, adver uh, adverse effect of the sloshing uh, 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 brought by the uh, 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 liquid uh, re resonance. Um, I, I, so, uh, but sometimes people may uh, treat the baffle as rigid plate. Uh, but however, I think the uh, elasticity uh, can also make some difference. Uh, and the second question about the uh, problematic uh, is that uh, sometimes uh, if we uh, if we uh, divide, uh, if we expand uh, w, uh, the deflection into uh, infinite series, and uh, we, uh, when we uh, uh, try to uh, derive the the higher uh, derivatives of the deflection, then the the series, if we uh, uh, if we uh, uh, if we uh, uh, try to solve the uh, get the derivative. Uh, for each term, and then uh, to sum each uh, to sum the derivative of each term together, then the the solution or the series will be um, not a uh, uh, to say uh, convergent. Mm. So it will bring some difficulties and uh, problems uh, to the uh, to our uh, to our solution procedure uh, mm. because at first we have tried to. Uh, directly uh, calculate the derivatives of the uh, deflection, but later we 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 notice that we cannot do it. We need to uh, first give the uh, higher derivatives of the deflection, and then uh, through integration by part, we can get the uh, the lower uh, derivative of the deflection. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also provides us a very efficient means to um, to impose the uh, edge conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, from your presentation, I and actually uh, from your papers, uh, I uh, understand uh, that uh, to solve. Uh, um, hydroelastic problems of hydroelasticity when uh, um, coupled problem of hydroelasticity. Uh, it's uh, 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 we can use the um, not uh, kind of not uh, standard techniques uh, as uh, uh, you uh, as you suggested in your in your papers. And uh, there is a way to solve this problem efficient efficiently and uh, uh, satisfying all boundary conditions and uh, arriving at uh, a quickly convergent uh, solution. So that is the um, one of e one of the result of this presentation. Mark, please. Uh, yeah. 
if you have time, uh, can you show your yeah. slide again from the oh, yeah, yeah. Bestnell series for the cylinder, uh, just to expand on what you were answering for Sa from Sasha's question? Is that, mm -hmm. uh, can, can, can you see my screen? Yes, I can yes, see. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, see yes. Yes, yes. Here, uh, in the rectangular channel problem, uh, we uh, if we if we just uh, expand W Y to the uh, 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 I, I believe the, sorry yeah. I believe the question was about cylinder is it Mark oh oh, oh, so, yeah, oh yes. okay yes. Uh, about here, here. Here. Uh, here is with a uh, uh, trigonometric function and uh, yeah. uh, basic function that's the, right yeah. and then you said the, that to obtain the derivative of the series you do these integration by parts, and then I think it was the following slide where you were examining, an, examining another summation. And on you, next slide, I, I'm guessing that on the next slide. Oh, you mean on the, the next slide? slide. You next, just next slide, yeah. Could you yeah, show the, the, slide? on this slide, it's uh, uh, it's a uh, by harmonic by uh, mm -hmm. by Laplacian operator. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you're doing these manipulations in order to obtain a, a derivative or a sequence of coefficients. Uh, I, I couldn't grasp why you're doing that. I mean, you, you end up with the result, but I didn't understand the significance of the result. You, you said it was important to be able to obtain a derivative of the series, but I, I couldn't see how that was uh, um, resulting from your end result. Perhaps it's on the following slide. Yeah, here. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah if we if we uh, just uh, substitute uh, W n uh, uh, directly into the uh, equations from the uh, boundary conditions at the interface, it will give us the different uh, expansions of uh, yes. of the, uh, uh, the the Laplacian uh, W n and uh, by Laplacian W n. Uh, this mm -hmm. th this uh, can be uh, non-convergent. However, if we uh, use the uh, integration by part, and uh, then we can get the convergent uh, expansions for the uh, the higher order uh, derivatives of deflection, or mm -hmm. ln and uh, mn. Thank you. You made that clearer. Thank you. Because uh, at first we made some. Uh, uh, actually, we 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 suffer a lot in in this place, and finally we find the reasons why our mm. uh, previous uh, attempt are invalid. Uh, invalid. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Um, uh, uh, so we should uh, we should finish. It's already uh, say or say. So then, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, to our speaker for a very nice presentation and uh, very useful uh, mathematical technique uh, to actually several techniques uh, to uh, solve uh, coupled hydroelastic problem. Thank you very much. I uh, stop recording and. Um, uh, I'll uh, um, uh, 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 I'll start uh, saving uh, the uh, file, uh, uploading the file, no, downloading the file, and uh, then uh, you can find uh, that presentation on YouTube. I hope it's a uh, uh, it's uh, nice with you, uh, Kang. I believe you can read a uh, uh, chat. Is it right? Oh, yes, yes, I, 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 and the uh, sharing, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, people are uh, sending thanks to you. I mean, participants oh. sending thanks to you. Yeah. And uh, I believe you, you would be pleased to read uh, that thanks from our participants. And indeed, uh, yeah, it was uh, useful. And uh, uh, oh, you, you also promised to share uh, your paper. Yes, yes. How, how yeah. To do um, yeah. I can. Uh, yeah. I think I can uh, sh share the 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 link of this. Yeah. So you can send in chat, right? Uh yes. I. Uh, yeah. I will. Just put it in chat, and uh, uh, participants, our participants can uh, uh, 
uh, as, uh, can find this paper, can download that paper. Yeah, let, let me find it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <sighs> um. Kank, you can send me uh, these. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm still uh, searching for the 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 free yeah. link. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can add this free link to your video record, which will be on YouTube. So the yeah, people could you. come there and uh, uh, they copy that link and uh, take that paper. I yeah. believe it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's allowed to do it that way. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. We uh, stop our seminar. And uh, uh, the uh, next uh, seminar will be uh, in uh, next um, Monday. Uh, it will be about another problem, not hydroelasticity. However, in two weeks, there will be another uh, presentation uh, on hydroelastic waves by uh, Ling Dong Zheng uh, from Harbin, which is, who is working on a uh, close problem, but a little bit different problem by different uh, techniques. So welcome to our seminars. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.